Hi, we're back with Rabbi Itzhak Shapira, and we were just trying to get, uh, we ran out of time, but we, we were talking about uh, the, the distinction between Jew and Gentile and, and understanding that, because it's going to make an impact on how we minister to oh, the different people. If you're talking to a, a religious Orthodox Jew, you need to be presenting the good news in a very different way than you're talking to either a secular Jew or yeah, yeah, um, I, I think someone you're who's non-Jewish. I think a very important point, because the vision of our ministry is really we do not... You know, there was a man named Rabbi Schneelsen, who is a very famous rabbi, the Lubavitcher yeah, rabbi, uh, the head of the spiritual, the Chabad movement. And in the 1970s, uh, late 70s, he came with this thing called Operation Love of Israel. And in essence, what he says is, go to the four corners of the earth, find a Jewish person there, regardless of his spiritual condition, if it's a secular or to orthodox, you minister to them in a way they can understand it. That was mm -hmm. his, quote unquote, his great commission. Okay, we took this uh, approach and we launched what's called Operation Love of Israel as well. Uh, uh, our Love of Israel is of course a deal with presenting the gospel and Yeshua, but we present the gospel in a completely different way. If it is a secular Jew or an Orthodox Jew, you're just flat out not going to talk to them the same way. So right. uh, through, through you know, videos, materials, uh, upcoming books, uh, uh, we, we are going to present it to them in a, in a different way. Now, what about the Gentiles? They don't have the background to, to reach, per se, to a Jewish person like that. I can tell you, though, that is not true, not mm. true. Most of the Jewish people so far who came to the Lord came through the nations, amazingly, and that's right. going, th this is going to actually continue. When the Jewish people can connect Yeshua, the Jewishness of Yeshua, and even the Christian faith, let's, let's even go there, somehow connect those, hey, this is not something completely foreign to Jewish people, then, then there will be opportunity to present, mm -hmm. to present the message. But other, if you don't do that, then it's, it's very difficult for the Jewish people. They right. see Jesus and say, the first time I heard about Jesus, I thought there was somebody named Jesus and the last name was Christ, you know? <laughs> It's, it's when, when did you come to first uh, uh, end up in a messianic uh, yeah, synagogue one time? It was think, interesting, you know. I was raised in Israel in a, in a Sephardic, uh, Sephardic, those are Jews who came out of Spain, uh, in a very secluded, uh, very, I, I, I wouldn't use the term orthodox, but we call them Shomrei Torah, Torah keepers. Okay, there were people more orthodox, less orthodox, but they all were uh, very, very, very traditionalist, okay? And I remember everything. The, old, the orthodox synagogue we were raised up in and all of that. I, I didn't meet any Gentile until I came to the United States. And that, that was a shocking experience. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to get into all my testimony for the sake of time, but yeah. I will share this. I walked into a... Um, a synagogue uh, in my late, uh, you know, late night. I was about 20 years old, so okay. about 17 years Did ago. Did someone invite you? Or well, no, what it? happened, it was a Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, oh, okay. and there's a special prayer in Yom Kippur called, called Nidre. It's, uh, mm -hmm. you're not re renouncing your vows. Right. And it was very important to me to be there, and I saw the sign, say, House of Yeshua, House of Joshua. Giant David stars. I figure it's a, it's a synagogue. Oh, I funny. walk in there and it was very shocking. different. <laughs> shocking. I was horrified by the thing because <laughs> I never see people worship like that. The way Jewish people worship is very different. It's very liturgical uh, mm -hmm. in this. I never have seen even musical instrument used, and, uh, and people were raising hands and. They were like, you know, they're waving their hands and I'm thinking, they're washing imaginary windows. You know? <laughs> that, those people are a bunch of, of Michiganists, you know, they're nuts. <laughs> and, and then it started dawn on me that the, the one they're talking about is not Joshua, that's the same name. Right, of, right. But it's Yeshua, Yeshua, you know, we call, we call him in Hebrew, Imach Shmo Vezichrom, and his name be blotted out, you know, and I'm like, oh, this is really sick and, and, and really bad and... The rabbi gave me um, a New Testament in Hebrew, and 
I didn't dare to open it for several years. And uh, I, I, I met a beautiful, beautiful uh, girl that was moving to Israel to make an aliyah. Mm. She ended up being my wife-to-be, but during this time I didn't know that uh, she's going to be my wife-to-be. And uh, uh, she told me about Yeshua too, and, and I was become really heavily involved with a lot of anti anti-messiah groups uh, supporting mm -hmm. them because I, I didn't want it to be true mm -hmm. and I it's it was such a, a terrifying journey I, I always say that if I can can recognize the issue as the Mashiach anybody really because I was the most hateful the most doubtful uh, really had blackness in my heart and uh, toward Christians especially, and look, I, I, I minister to Christians now as well as Jews. It's, it's yeah. only God can do that. You realize people cannot do this. People yeah. cannot change like that. Only God can change people like so that. So that provoked you to look into this uh, issue yeah. of Messiah. Yeah. And what yeah. is Messiah? Because that yeah. word well, is looked, anointed I, one, right? I, I look because, you know, I, all my life, since I can recall myself as being four or five years old, I, I studied Torah, I studied right. the, 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 you know, the Bible, uh, you know, uh, I knew what the Bible said very good, but b mostly what we studied was the commentaries. Right. Not necessarily reading it for our own sake. So I read it for my own sake, and that's led to more confusion, to be honest with you. Because mm -hmm. many times, plus the Hebrew Bible is uh, it's kind of uh, gray, you know. Uh, yeah, it can mean this, but it doesn't have to mean this. Remember Isaiah 53, I came to every possible explanation why it cannot be the Messiah. Uh, right. It's have to be Israel, you know, as an example. So I went through this for many, many years of my life. And um, uh, I, I then studied the Talmud, the, the, the oral tradition, and, and the Zohar, the, the mystical teaching. And, and I started to see a lot of the things the Christians believe are really grounded in Judaism, right. the problem is we don't call it the same things. The context is right. lost. The concepts are the same, but the context is, is completely lost. So um, I came to a book by a man named uh, Echiel Tzvi Lichtenstein uh, about uh, 14 years ago, who was an Orthodox Jewish rabbi who came to faith, and, uh, and uh, he wrote a full commentary on the prophets mm. and that's kind of started my salvation process along with studying in Israel I really devoted my life to study uh, and uh, one day uh, you know I had a supernatural experience with the God of Israel it wasn't just it was supernatural experience kind of like Paul you know, funny you mentioned Paul <laughs> yeah. uh, a supernatural thing scales came off my eyes I spent another four years believing Yeshua was the Messiah, but rejecting his divinity, his deity. Right. And we used to have a Bible study for all the Israelis in my house. And, uh, uh, you know, some people who knew Hebrew, just talking about, I was kind of fighting for Yeshua, but never saying divine. Right. And then I got it, I got it. I got who he was after many, many years, maybe three or four more years that he is much more than just a Mashiach. He is a manifestation of the mighty, mighty one of Israel. And when that happened, the very next Shabbat, we founded the uh, Avat Synagogue. And uh, I went for almost eight years and served as the synagogue uh, rabbi, became ordained rabbi in the process. And uh, uh, last uh, year and a half, the Lord whispered in my ear, it's a time really to take this message to the entire world. Wow. And that's how we got to where we are today. It's, it's, uh, it's really amazing. That's awesome. I, I think the divinity is even somewhat of a mystery within Christianity and not having the Hebraic and the, the Jewish background of uh, and understand, not understanding the Torah and not understanding from that perspective, it probably even makes it more difficult. So I'm excited to read your book that's oh, yeah, coming out the, yeah, yeah, that's going to address yeah, some of these issues yeah, the, the from book, a Jewish perspective. Yeah, the book that I assume you're talking about, The Return of the Kosher yes. Fig, because there are a few books that are in the pipeline, but this is the first one that will be released in a, in a course of the next several years. 
And the return of the kosher pig is really my theological journey, if wow. you want to think about it. You see, for uh, Christians, sometimes they, were, they look at the issue, am I saved, yes or no, am I in and out? Right. This is really not the way uh, the, the, the Bible really works at all. You know, Moses cried out in Deuteronomy, he says, uh, righteousness, righteousness you are to pursue. He talk about pursuing something that you're never actually going to get but it is the process that God can think of, not right. just about am I in or out. And, and I went through a process, literally, of 15 years of turning every stone on the issue of the deity of the Messiah through, through Jewish literature. Uh -huh. Solely, I don't care really what the Christians have to say because it's all no merit right. in my mind, not because it's not good literature. Because when I came to faith, I wanted to know what every Jew what every great rabbi in the last 2,000 years thought about the Messiah. Right. So I kind of jump in into to what I call the Sea of Judaism. And, and we're publishing now this work. Um, like I tell you, there's such an excitement in the uh, Messianic movement because of this work. Because yeah. nobody really, uh, for many, many years, you know, from the 1800s until now, nobody try to do something like this. Right. In a way, it's, uh, it's brave. Uh, I mean, I put it <laughs> off. I, I'm not that brave because time, I put, yeah. it up, put it up for many years, but God says to me, now it's the time. So we spent several years in writing, several years in writing, and the book is, is going to be out. It's uh, www.kosherpig.org, or the title of the book is The Return of the Kosher Pig. I'm right. sure some people listen to the title and they are... Yeah, they're going to go, what? Well, the Christians are going to interpret it one way, and the Jews obviously would interpret it and have a, a, a different understanding of what you really mean when you say that. The, the book really goes well with what we spoke about in the first segment. Yeshua today, his name is a blasphemous name for the Jewish people. It is our job to reconcile Yeshua back to the proper context. It's not his right. job, it is our job, because we made the mess. Right. We made the mess. Now we have to fix the mess. God, through the Holy Spirit, will do it. We see it every day. I, I can spend hours just telling you miraculous story after miraculous story how God is working. working. But here is the book. It's a book of reconciliation. And the issue with Jewish people is simple. How can you take a man and worship him as God? It's as simple as that. That is, that is going against Torah. Right. You know, that's going against Mount Sinai. That's going against the prophets. So we must reconcile, reconcile this. But the way we reconcile it is like that. Yeah. We reconcile it. That's the uniqueness of the book. We reconcile it within two days. I don't say I feel, I think, I believe. I present what those before me. Right. Uh, I believe now somebody can look, look, read the book and say, yeah, but you quote those who do not, did not accept Jesus. You know, it is true. They didn't accept Jesus. But the concept, every concept is a Jewish concept. Yeah. And if we can show that the belief in the, the, the Yeshua is not falling to Judaism, then we can start the discussion right. and dialogue. And this is, this is what the book, it's a book of reconciliation. And not just for Jews, from the nations. We need to understand how to defend the faith. How to defend the, the faith. Because, look, if we say Jesus is God, well, then how do you, how do you, prove how, that? How do you reconcile it to the Torah? So, so, so that's, that's a difficult issue. Yeah, if we don't understand um, our own, uh, well, if we present as a Christian, if the Christian community has presented to the Jewish community a Torah abolishing Jesus, Right. And that is not the historic Yeshua and what he taught. So yeah. that just frustrates our efforts all the more. Um, but the, the deity thing is the probably... The, 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 the deity the, is the biggest... The big, the the, big stumbling no, block. That is the, the biggest. I can tell you I'm dealing with hundreds or if not even thousands of Jewish people. That is the issue. It is it's the, the deity. And the reason the book called the return of the kosher pig, because the word in Hebrew for pig and the word to return right. is the exact same word. It's a play on word. So the rabbis ask in a, a sermon, go back to the uh, 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 8th century, and they ask the question, why is the pig called pig? 
The king pig is called pig because he will return to Israel and he will take the crown of glory and he will put it upon his head. You see, now you say, well, how dare you call Yeshua pig? No, they, this is just a metaphor. Right. For something is unclean, who will come back and will be the most beautiful uh, uh, thing to so the So they church. anticipate, some of the writings anticipate oh, that absolutely. something they've thought is unclean is really clean. Uh, remember we asked you a, a while back, it's more than this. It's not about who is the first Messiah in the scripture. It's Noah, right? Yeah, right. So uh, in Judaism, you have a different harmonical uh, level of reading the text. One level, one is, is according to the simplistic meaning textual. One of them is according to uh, uh, midrashic uh, uh, understanding. That's kind of a point of view or a story or a sermon. One of them is through what's called clue. The Hebrew language is a unique language. Oh, yes. It's like you're looking at a four-dimensional jigsaw. Like, I'll give you an example. Um, the first Messiah in the scripture is, is Noah. His name in Hebrew is, is Noah. Noah, you say, was a, a blameless, blameless, blameless man, righteous, righteous in his generations, right? And the word, now, was he rejected by the people around him? Mm -hmm. Yes, he was rejected. It's a picture of the Messiah who will be uh, rejected by the, pe by, by the people. It's uh, according to rabbinical writing. But it doesn't end just there. Noah hold in Hebrew the, the, the number 58. 58 uh, it's, uh, it's a very important number. Is that the number of his name? Uh, That's his, the, the, literally his number. The letters yeah, the being letter. numbers and yeah, then they yeah, add yeah, up it's, to it's, 58. It's scientific method. You know, right. every Hebrew letter or number. Right. Uh, the name that our, the Jewish people call Yeshua today, Imach, may his name be blotted out. Yes? Mm -hmm. That's what also means mean 58. It's exactly mm -hmm. the same number as, as, as the name Noah, you know? Uh, uh, the word Noah, Noah, if you turn the letters, you get the word Chen. Chen is something that of great beauty. Something that is in great beauty. How can something that is in great beauty can be blotted out. Mm. You see? Because the pig, those, the, the, the name of Yeshua is a name that, that calls Jewish people today to, to be angry and upset. It's the name that one day every knee will bow down under and every, every tongue will confess that he is Lord. And it is our job. You see, I, I, Yeshua is ready. Mm. I tell you he's sitting in heaven right now. He is ready to return. We are not ready. Right. We need to, we the bride needs to get ready. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that's yeah. the thing. You know, it's a Jewish wedding. And until the bride says in a Jewish wedding, I am ready, the groom is not coming. Yeah. Okay? So, so this is an important point. The bride is not ready. Now, Peter's vision is really tying into the same kind of concept of what you're saying because Peter perceived... Uh, something to be a person to be unclean, people, the Gentiles to be unclean, yes. and yet at the same time, God was saying, those that I have cleansed, this righteous Gentile, do not consider unclean anymore. Right. So there's some overplay here a little you, bit you, with, with you what see, you're saying here, you're with right. their perception of, of Yeshua being unclean, but he's you, really you, You're clean. absolutely right. So you're absolutely thing. right. Yeshua is unclean today to the Jewish people. We need to make him clean. And those who believe need to know how to to defend their faith. Absolutely. So this is, this is important work. Um, we are so thrilled about this because it's going to open for the first time. Uh, uh, the subtitle is the deity of, Yeshua, of the Messiah through Jewish eyes. Yeah. Imagine yourself being blurry when you read the, the Old Testament. You're going to put glasses on, Jewish glasses, yeah. and you're going to see the, the Tanakh through Jewish eyes, and that will be a huge eye-opener to, to everybody. So we are ecstatic about that. Now, in, in talking about the deity of, of Messiah, and I was contemplating some of the things that you said in, in, that I was watching on your videos, and I thought, well, if I was sitting down with an Orthodox Jewish person, how would I approach that issue? And I thought about the fact that, uh, and so I'd, I'd like to hear your, your, your comments kind of on my, my thinking here. If we know that... Uh, Ms., um, Moses at the top of Mount Sinai, he saw the real tabernacle and, yeah. and he was to copy everything exactly as he had seen it. And there would have been an intercessor, there would have been a high priest right. functioning because the Aaronic priests right. are, 
are acting in that role. So there's, if they're acting in the copy role, then there had to be someone interceding uh, in the, the real. The, the first so time, they're, they're, right. The, the first, what would they say about that? Well, first of all, the, the idea, he, so, so there's a lot of misconception. One misconception is the Jewish people do not need a mediator today. Right, so. Uh, and, and the answer is falsehood. It's not true. Not by modern Judaism and not by biblical Judaism. We need to make a distinction between what I call Pharisaic Judaism, okay, Judaism to, according to Yeshua time, Judaism today, they are completely different. Right. They are completely different because we don't have a temple. So a lot of things have to be put in place to substitute, substitute the temple. So look, first of all, the first time the word Mashiach mentioned in the scripture, here is the way it's important to present the gospel. Start with the scripture. Start with the scripture. But also bring Jewish thought. You know, when I was in Israel and in the temple, they put the, the picture of the same Rabbi Schneerson and they say, Here live our God, our Master, and our, and our, and our Lord, Yudai Vavai, the full name of God. And they bow down to the picture. They bow down to the picture. So uh, I have this the picture in my book. You know, people will be able to see that. So the idea here is Judaism definitely support the idea of a mediator. Mm -hmm. Definitely support the idea that the mediator will die for their sins. It's mm -hmm. all within Jewish framework. The, the point, if not if it is or isn't, is how you go about presenting, presenting it. it. And that's really what our ministry does. We go all over the country and the world, and we bring contextual truths, okay? It's one thing to have truth, right? but there's another thing to have a contextual truth. In Judaism, context is as important as truth, okay? Right, right. We call it in Hebrew, kelim. The, the context called kelim, kelim means tools, okay? If I invite you uh, and I say, okay, build, build this chair, chair, but here you have no instruction, I promise you, you will have a hard time to build this chair. I don't care how simple the chair is, unless you're whiz, okay? But the second I show you the blueprint, then it's become much more simpler to build it, uh, to do it. And the blueprint is what we have to get back to. And the blueprint has to be Jewish blueprint. Uh, Paul says, you know, uh, uh, to, to be all things to all people, to the Jewish people, to be as a Jew. Uh, you know, when I speak to a Christian, I'm not going to speak to him like I speak to a Jew either, sure. obviously. So it is important for us to uh, uh, present it. There was, used to be a slogan in Israel on the cars, you know, don't be right, be smart. And, and this is a challenge I want you to, to, to give to everybody who hear it. It's not just about being right and wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay, I know that there are a lot of things that we do as a Jewish people are not necessarily biblical. Mm -hmm. And some people like to pick on this point and say, oh, they are not this. Well, uh, here's the way you answer this. Tell me, um, where is Hanukkah is in the Bible? In the New Testament? <laughs> exactly, you're making my point. Yeshua celebrate Hanukkah. Right. And, and, and here's another one. Why did the book of Luke went to extreme, to extreme point to tell us that Yeshua was 12 years old when he walked? Why, 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 when he went up to Jerusalem? Why did Luke enter the, the, this detail about being 12 years old? Why? Mm -hmm. Bar Mitzvah, mitzvah. he yeah. wasn't in the age of Bar Mitzvah yet. Yeah. He wasn't in the age of accountability, okay? Yeah. Yeshua himself worked within a framework. Right. Matter of fact, you know the, skill, the scripture everybody likes to quote, I did not come to abolish, but I came to fulfill the, the Torah. Right. The order in Greek, the plerosio in Hebrew, lemalot, is talking about being inside something and expanding it. You're not going to come outside something, tear a wall, and then say, I want to build. That's, that's mm -hmm. not going to work. It's not going to fly with the Jewish people. And, and the nations need to understand it. You have to be within a framework. What does it mean right. to be a framework? Do I need to become completely Jewish? No, you know, you, look, you don't need to become Jewish. Right. But, but things like, for instance, the Feast of the Lord, you know, they're not given only to the Jewish people. Yeah. God says, those are my feasts, you know. Yeah. So, so you start somewhere, and as the Holy Spirit convicts you, you do as much as the, the Ruach gives you. 
I don't believe the, you know, condemning the nation, say, you must be like me. No. Yeah. You do as much as the Holy Spirit give you. But the Only in as much as you're walking as our Rabbi Yeshua walked. Um, then as much we want to learn and look, take the zitzi from and yeah, hold and yeah, let us course, let us learn course, from you. But we need to be yeah. li look. Yes, you're right. But we need to be uh, how should I say, gentle yes. the Gentiles. Yes. There are so many it's messages that I yeah. hear. Oh, the gen oh, you are cursed because you celebrate Christmas. Oh, you are cursed because because you know your paganism. And I said, look, you right. share the truth. And right. let God do the rest. Yes. And that's what I believe. The Holy Spirit yes. have to dwell and steer people, people out in this matter. And uh, it's not going to be coming down and beating down in the street. By the way, this Matthew 5.17 scripture, you know, taken out of context, it's not even talking to Gentiles. Yes. Verse 1 and 2 say he's talking to Jews. <laughs> you know, so, so, so let's take it, even Yeshua word, let's take it in a proper context of who he's talking about. When, when Paul talking to the church in Galatia and he tells them, and he tells them, look, um, uh, uh, he speak against circumcision to them. Well, guess what? He's not talking against circumcision. He's talking against basing your salvation experience on those things. The same is true today. The Gentiles who come in to understanding Torah need to understand one thing. The Torah is not the end goal. A Torah Amen. is a tool to get you from A to B. The yes. end goal is personal relationship with Yeshua Amen. HaMashiach. Amen. Don't make the Torah the end goal. This is yes. something yes. that is important for everybody to understand. Amen. So, that, um, that's, that is a powerful message I hope everybody really yeah. takes away from this. Because, uh, but to get on a little on your point, uh, that you were making from a personal perspective, coming in, keeping the Sabbath now, keeping the Feast of the Lord. If I didn't have the opportunity to learn and take some of those traditions, like lighting the candles uh, to welcome the Sabbath with my girls, Great. And these, these things that we inherit from the Yehudi, from Jews, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it, wouldn't, it, it wouldn't be the same. I mean, no, no, it, it, it just yeah, it provides this framework absolutely. to really enter into these times that if you didn't have it, I would I'd I, I, feel this I loss. I leave you with this word. It's from the Talmud, from our Jewish yeah. law. It says, when you do those things, when you exercise the Torah for its own sake, it will lead you to life. Yes? Yeah. However, if it doesn't exercise for its own sake, it will lead to the, your, your cutting of your head. Yeah. What is the, its own sake of the Torah? Deuteronomy 30, verse 6. Circumcise your heart. Mm -hmm. Does it lead you to see and be with Yeshua or not? Amen. Very great words to close our session. We thank you, thank you. Uh, for coming and interviewing with us. We're looking forward to your teachings tonight thank and this you. weekend. And uh, we'll see you all next time on uh, the chat room.